Hello everybody, welcome to Paris. Welcome to episode number 47 of my series of live walking tours. Uh, there's nothing wrong with your screen. Don't adjust that dial. It's just we're going vertical this time for the first episode uh, ever. And you may be saying to yourself, oh no, Corey, not vertical video. I hate vertical video. Well, I'm not a big fan of it either, but honestly, it seemed very fitting for this episode number 47 is the Paris Door Tour. I'm really excited. I found here in the 9th Arrondissement Small an incredible concentration of beautiful doorways. And so we are going to enjoy that today. I can see my first live viewer is Benita Guzzi. Hi, Benita. It's so nice to have you here. I'm thrilled. We're going to start here on a, rue, uh, a street rather that really has the best concentration of beautiful doors that I've ever found in my nine years here. Um, it's called the Rue Saint-Georges. Again, if you're just joining, welcome everybody. Bonjour, bonjour. We're in the ninth arrondissement, starting on a street called the Rue Saint-Georges. And let's get a little bit closer to this beauty at number 40. The door tour, welcome to it. As far as I know, the first ever live stream tour of the doors of Paris. So you can see right away. Uh, let's just get started here. This beautiful flower motif, almost like sort of a um, lily of the valley type thing, right? With the bulbs. And that goes all the way around this beautiful entrance. Hi, everybody. It's great to see your names popping up there. We've got these capitals over here, what's known as a Corinthian capital. And then all this beautiful wreath work. We're just getting started. Welcome to all of you. And welcome if you're listening on the replay and you're lost somewhere in the future looking back on this. Um, we're at number 40 Rue Saint-Georges. What else can I show you here? Let's zoom in. It's all about details today. We're just going to go rapid fire with the details and the doors. Look at these beautiful handles with the, the faces there. I hope that's coming through for you. You can see my mom just signed up live. Fantastic. in the family support. So you notice I'm going vertical today. There's nothing wrong with your screen. Exceptionally today, just for this one time, I thought it would be very logical to shoot in the shape of a door. So there we go. One last thing I wanted to point out. These streets are very busy today, so I got to watch it. Here there's an interesting motif where there's sort of a vase with something pouring out of it. And I can't even figure out what's supposed to be pouring out of it. It almost looks like ribbons, but then it kind of looks like flames from a torch. But there is definitely a motif where this is extending out um, and something is meant to be pouring out of that receptacle. So again, rapid fire today from the Rue Saint-Georges in the 9th arrondissement. Here we go, that's the first one. If we turn right around, because it's all about the concentration of beauty in this neighborhood, that's why I chose this area for this tour. Number 31 across the street too, not too shabby. Although I admit we've already set the bar pretty high for this episode with that previous one. But anyway, there's a lot of loveliness going on here. Coucou and bonjour and salut. I can see all of you with your lovely uh, French salutations and I appreciate that. Welcome to Paris today and welcome to the 9th arrondissement. A little detour here onto the Rue Saint-Lazare. For number 15 and I'm going to back my way into the street here. Look at this beauty. There we go. We found it. Sandwiched between, squeezed really, between these two modern businesses today is number 15 Rue Saint-Lazare. Of course, it's not just the doors, it's what's around them as well. And then we've got a, a cherub theme. Get ready for cherubs today. Get ready for cherubs, get ready for lions, get ready for vines and bunches of grapes and things like that. The weather's very nice, better than expected today, so we're happy. We got the little green man, so we're going to pop further up the Rue Saint-Georges. Welcome, everybody. This is the door tour. First ever live stream tour of the doors of Paris, I think. So I'm excited to do this for you all and to share with you a slightly different version of Paris as far as just we're going to go rapid fire with the doors in this area. Uh, Debbie Krasinski says lions and cherubs and grapes. Oh, my. 
I'm sure my mother will appreciate that joke too, because growing up, my mom was a huge Wizard of Oz fan. Look at this one here. It's the color that attracted me to it first. Certainly, it's very austere. It's not very ornate. And I was here a while ago, and I thought, that door is speaking to me for some reason, and I really don't know why. I guess it's just the color. Turns out, I dig deeper. Here at number 37 on the Rue Saint-Georges, this was a residence of Renoir. And not just Renoir at any old period of his life. Sometimes, you know, the doors are great because of what happened behind them. Right here at the top, in the top floor, Renoir lived, and he moved in here uh, in 1873, which was an interesting year because the very next year is where he and his friends, Cezanne, Degas, Pizarro, Monet, they would have gotten together up there at Renoir's uh, pad, and they would have said to themselves, let's start a community of artists, a commune of sorts, and we're going to call ourselves the Anonymous Society of Painters, Sculptors, Printmakers, etc. That was actually the name of their artist collective, and that may sound a little long-winded, so they eventually just called themselves the Impressionists. But it was here in this house and in the cafes nearby that Renoir and all his cronies decided to put on the first Impressionist show with that new, uh, newfound collective. 1874, it was an enormous flop. Um, in fact, it was only a month long. They charged only the equivalent of about $5 to get into the first Impressionist exhibit in Paris. Nobody showed up. On the very first day, only 175 visitors. On the last day of the exhibit of this first Impressionist show, um, something like 54 visitors showed up. It was an absolute flump. And poor Renoir and all of his buddies of that new collective lost money on the deal. It was considered a, a horrific failure. But anyway, Renoir up there on the top floor. And this is where he was living and coming home each night during that first Impressionist exhibit. And that story there alone makes that door just as awesome as these others. Take a look at this. A lot of great ironwork here. There is a motif that you will see in Paris quite often of a man and a woman that have this sort of medieval slash renaissance vibe. You can not only see them there, with a bird and a dog. By the way, the dog, usually, not because they had a dog historically, but a dog was a symbol of loyalty. So that's why that's there. But then look at this, you'll see this. I'm sure those who have come to Paris have noticed. You've got a guy's head sticking out in relief. And then on the other side, he's looking over this way to a young fair maiden. So you quite often see that with a man and a woman's heads in iron usually, or sometimes stone, looking across to each other. And in fact, it's probably the old medieval lovers, uh, Eloise and Abelard. Uh, the history of Paris is 12th century, and um, here Eloise is a theologian and a tutor, and he is tutoring the young, beautiful Eloise, and they fall in love secretly, and they have this passionate love affair, and then they're separated, and it goes on and on. Well, in 1804, they opened Père Lachaise Cemetery, and then soon after, as a publicity stunt, they moved the remains, supposedly, of Eloise and Abelard to Paris, to Père Lachaise. And so ever since then, People were talking about it, and Eloise and Abelard, the, the old sort of uh, medieval lovers, were incorporated into this. That's at least the theory. So there you go. The man and the woman looking across each other. Now, why, if you look closely here, she's got, they're gazing into each other's eyes, and she's got the, the bird on her hand. But what's with this knuckle rub here? He, this guy is getting a little handsy, to be honest. And <laughs> normally you don't see that kind of touching, right? It's a kind of pretty intimate, and I think it's probably just to keep this whole iron structure solid. Right? You wouldn't want a gap there. You'd want to keep this thing nice and strong. So, yeah, a little knuckle rub that, quite honestly, a little bit uh, cheeky, if I may say so. We're still on the Rue Saint-Georges here at number 41. I like this where they have this marble placking on either side. And it's not fake. It's not a veneer. It's not painted on. It's actually real marble. So let me show you that. Just another extra detail. So this is the real thing. And you can see it's kind of damaged here and gouged, but that's authentic. And then lions. Can you make that out? Let's zoom in. Not just lions, but horned lions, if you can make out the horns there. And as I said, grapes, winged creatures. And squirrels, all these little woodland creatures, it almost becomes a bit of a treasure hunt to figure out how many animals you can discern in these designs. That's number 41. Okay, we got a lot to see, so I got to keep moving.
<laughs> I see Patty Lindsay says, you may, with a smiley face. Is that in reference to the knuckle rub, Patty? <laughs> knuckle rub, madame? Oh, you may. Uh, number 52, beautiful in a different way. That color, I hope that color is coming through on your screen because it is a beautiful, rich, delicious cobalt. Um, and then, let's zoom in, just beautifully intricate. This is what we love about Paris, right? The inventiveness of it. And the fact that so little of it is mass produced and there, there's such a variation. Like these beautiful things, these nipply type uh, protrusions. Across the street, look at this. This is a different kind of doorway. This is a bistro and it's just stunning. Look at that. Problem. Sorry, people were behind me. As usual, wondering what the hell I'm doing. Le Bon Georges. Beautiful old style facade there, the bistro, nice throwback. And it wraps around the corner too. Maison de qualité. Look at this. Look at those beautiful, usually those uh, circular windows, the French tend to call them an oeil de boeuf, a bullseye. And hopefully you can see the, um, the sculpted details there. Gorgeous. Let's continue up. Again, it's all about the concentration of details here on the Rue Saint-Georges in the 9th arrondissement. This is number 54, and we've got some more great ironwork. I'm back up a little bit more. I'll show you that. Just for fun, maybe someone can keep a tally of how many doors we actually see today. You can let me know at the end of the episode. I missed the name, but somebody just said that's a big, great place to eat, by the way. So we're getting, you heard it here, live from Paris. Somebody's saying that that is a good eatery, so pop it into your notebook. Look at this beauty, number, number 49. First of all, the colors, it's so creamy. Creamy and dreamy. And if we move in here, there's definitely a lot to enjoy. What's going on here is it's an absolute beautiful combination of wood, actual wood, all these separate pieces, right, cut out and nailed together. Let's just show you that. That is stunning. That is worth kneeling down on the dirty sidewalk for. And then from, with the wood, you've got what I just, I love. Th this is all metal. Let me show you this. Actual, delicious, cold, hard metal. And I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of the color of this wood, too. Um, up here, you've got another Corinthian style capital at the top in metal. Just these little flourishes that didn't need to be there, but boy, aren't we glad that they are. And then this, this little thing too, speaking of flourish, a little extra oomph there at the end. And what I call the address plaque up top is very ornate too. Hopefully you can see that. And we're not done. Look at what's going on here. That's a, it's a floral motif, um, specifically roses. Look at that. And it's sticking out too. Wow, wow, wow. The Paris Door Tour. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We got 275 people. Can we crack 300 live viewers today? Tell your friends, share this on your page right away. Let's see, that'll be our challenge today. That's what it's all about. I think that's all I wanted to show you on this one. Ooh, it's quite the meditation station today, folks. Ah, Jacqueline Romo, a longtime supporter and follower of this project. Hi, Jacqueline, it's great um, to have you here. She's asking what period are these from, roughly. We're talking mid-1800s. We'll talk more specifically about the timing in just a moment, Jacqueline, but yeah, that's a fine question. Most of this neighborhood here developed 1850s, 1860s. Oh, I almost, talking to Jacqueline here, as Jacqueline and I had our private little moment, I almost forgot this street sign. We're on the Rue 
the Rue d'Aumal, which is named after the Duc d'Aumal. And I hope you can make it out in, your, in the video, but this is an anomaly. I've never seen a street sign like this. In fact, there's a period at the end of the, the word. It says the Rue d'Aumal with a period. Let me see if I can get closer. That is so bizarre, and I can't find a reason for it. I can't find an explanation. And it may seem just random and useless and stupid, but if you're obsessed with Paris like me and you study these details, you start to see certain patterns and I've just simply never seen a period at the end of a street sign, uh, street name rather, and I'm convinced it must have been a mistake. It happens to be the same on the other side, which is farther away, we won't be able to see that. But yeah, so a period at the end of a street name, very bizarre, considering it's just the name of a duke. There's no reason it's not abbreviated or anything like that. Here we go, before we even get to the door of this building, Windows. Ah, Walter McCure says, awesome tour, Corey. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> Bruce Jewell gets the best joke of the day so far. Bruce says, you've got more people live than the Impressionists had at their exhibit. Oh, that's such a great comment, Bruce. Thanks, buddy. Ah, oh, that makes me feel good. I never thought of it quite that way. Not that I won't, I promise I won't let my head get too big, right? <laughs> okay, so this is number three of the Rue de Mal. Stunning. Let's get in close, of course. What I particularly like is this. This is legit sculpted wood. Oh boy. All the pieces and creases. Pieces and creases. Wow. Isn't it great too to have the combination of stone, wood, iron, and glass in some instances? Ugh. We got a couple of followers that love to take screenshots of these videos, and I think those folks, Peggy and Randy, you're going to have a grand old time. But we got history here too. Richard Wagner, the German composer, lived here 1860 to 61 at a time when over in the United States we were uh, throwing ourselves into the horrors of the Civil War and um, things were getting real nasty. But over here, nice quiet little street, Wagner uh, lived here. Later on, Wagner's music left a bit of a bad taste in people's mouths in, in Paris because uh, Hitler was a big fan of Wagner and the music of this composer became essentially the soundtrack of the Nazi party because Hitler was such a fan. And so in Paris, they never really fell in love with him too much, particularly during the occupation, of course, when the Germans were here. But Wagner wrote some pieces that you definitely would recognize. I mean, he was a major player in the 19th century. For example, he did that theme that you definitely know, which is and if you don't recognize that, you'll definitely recognize this piece by Wagner, which you definitely have heard in some of the happiest moments of your lives. And it goes like this. Yeah, here comes the bride, the bridal chorus by this guy Wagner. And he lived here in 1860 with a beautiful door. Um, as we move forward, by the way, why do we use that song, Here Comes the Bride? Why was Wagner's piece chosen out of all the others? Queen Victoria in England had a daughter who was getting married to a Prussian slash German prince, and she decided in honor of her fiance's heritage, she wanted that song by Wagner played at her grand royal British wedding. And that's really all it would take, right? For a fancy schmancy princess to choose a certain song at her wedding and everybody else follows suit. So that's why you've heard Wagner's music, and oddly enough, what some would say, Nazi music at a wedding. But anyway, let's not dwell on that. Look at this beautiful view. Now we're getting into some real beautiful Gothic stuff. This is an 1864 building. So there you go, Jacqueline Romo, 1864. Um, and let's zoom in because that period in the mid 19th century was a Gothic revival, medieval gargoyle uh, revival. So you can see it here in the handles. You can really see it in those beauties. Oh my goodness. Someone snap a screenshot of that. Make me a t-shirt and send it over my way. Just a real refresher for those who aren't up to it, um, up on the whole gothic thing. 
medieval times, 12th century, the French in invent Gothic stained glass, flying buttresses, the great cathedrals, and then it fell out of favor. You went to Renaissance Baroque, but then in the 1800s there was a revival. Even over in Brooklyn, New York, you can be walking around and you'll see these beautiful Gothic cathedrals, but they're neo-Gothic. It was the revival that brought it for forth. Even St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan, if some of you know that beautiful Gothic cathedral, that was the same period that these buildings were being built. Did you notice the peacock, by the way? There's a taxidermied peacock up there if you can make it out above the address plaque. I don't know if that's someone's home or someone's uh, office, but they're really going for the decoration. There you go. The building itself, not too shabby. And then lastly, do you notice anything odd about the address plaque of number eight? Just like the period at the end of the street name there on the corner, I do not know why this is an upside down eight. Is that a mistake? Uh, is that someone's, like, a secret hidden meeting? I don't know. I don't want to rob you of any details, so in case you missed this going up. 286 live viewers. Let's crack 300 here. Not that it really matters, but I wouldn't mind seeing that number pop up today for the door tour. Okay. This building, uh, the architect and sculptor, did the same building right next door. So you're going to see what's great is the same sort of dragony gothic revival but a different style, right? Completely different but same theme. Oh, so good. And then again, fitting with gothic, what we have is what I see kind of a bat bat wing uh, vibe here. And I know what you're all thinking. It's the same thing that I always think when I walk down these streets. If I could only come home to that every day. I don't know which of my problems it would solve, but it would somehow solve two or three or four of them. Little window there, some ironwork. Phyllis Cartwright says she loves this one. Yeah, this is a highlight for me, This these two next door. And you know, it's just... You know, the, the French writer Balzac described being a flaneur the best way that I've ever heard it described. And he said, it's like gastronomy for the eye. What we do is we just walk around and we nibble and we taste and we sample with our eyes all of these beautif beautiful little moments. Here's a door, it's lovely in a different kind of way. Look, metallic. And then if you get close enough, you can peek through into a courtyard that I wouldn't mind someone inviting me into one day. Try to get out of the frame for you, there we go. If you can make that out. So again, it's not just that it's a concentration of nice doors, but it's that everyone is different. A, a different concept, different materials, different motif. Right next door, this one's lovely in its own right. It's almost like a beautiful fine iron mesh, right? Again, the pieces increases, you gotta get in there. I talk about uh, Paris not being mass-produced as far as the, um, the, the, the details you'll see. How, this is an exception, though. You will see this quite a lot if you look around. Um, the whole wolves biting into the handle thing, which I adore, I love. But that is something, interestingly, that you will see repeated. I've seen it in the Marais. I've seen it in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. But what I like is this, this idea, like you're coming home and you've you got to wrangle the handle away from the, the rabid wolves. This is an affluent area, of course. People are living well up here. Hope you're enjoying the door tour, everybody. I was really excited to share this area. Again, we're in the ninth arrondissement, as a reminder. And um, we are way off the beaten track. What I love about this series is I can take you far away from anything that the tour guides will typically steer you toward. 
It's a little dark up there, but can you make out the balconies? There's some beautiful, particularly underneath the balconies. Wow. Again, you have your morning coffee out there. It's kind of hard to start your day off on the wrong foot. Holy crap, we just hit 304 live viewers. Wow, all I had to do was ask for it. <laughs> Thanks everybody, this is fantastic. I'm so glad that you're joining me. If you missed any of this, the uh, HD replay will be going up later on today on my Facebook and on YouTube and you'll be able to watch this. And I don't always film vertically, by the way. I'm not a huge fan of it, but clearly for today's episode, it made sense. So if you thought we were finished with breathtaking, amazing, over the top, luxurious, sumptuous doors, well, think again, because we're still in the thick of it here. This is number 95. Remember what I said about the, the vase or the vase dumping something out? Do you see that right there? It's the same kind of idea. Love it. Oh, don't you just want to sink your teeth into these things? It's like a beautiful dessert or something. Uh, what else did I want to show you here? Oh yeah, you can see by the way which handle's being used. That's why they ask you to not touch paintings in museums. Uh, and then this is great too, right? Just wrapping its way up. Again, those leaves going up the, the pillar there didn't have to happen. That little flourish at the top never had to happen. Someone decided it was worth their time to do it. We've got a little bit of elevation if you haven't noticed here in the Nithal Holmes Mall. This one's more subdued, so the door itself isn't amazing, but what, the reason I wanted to show it to you was the very subtle and elegant carving up top, so it's not over the top. Like some of the others we've seen. Very understated, very delicate. What's great too, I'm not sure if it, if it sorry, comes out on your screen, but this is all in sculpted relief, so it's 3D coming out at you. But then here, sorry for my digits, here it's actually carved. So that's something, if you want to approach this with a very discerning kind of artistic eye, um, that is a, a conscious choice. They could have just made everything in 3D, but that um, is a nice artist's decision to do part of it on the right-hand side in 3D relief and then switching same motif but carving it out. Let's continue. So for those of you who are new to this, welcome. I'm doing these every weekend, these live stream tours of Paris. The idea is if you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm gonna bring Paris to you. And I'm very passionate about the city. I'm a full-time tour guide. And if you ever come to Paris, there's a link in the description of this video here um, that you can contact me to take a tour um, in real life, if you like. And my photography is on Instagram and I have a blog and I have members on patreon.com who choose to support this project and help it survive and thrive and continue so that we can go from episode 47 to episode 147. And if you wanna become a supporter uh, with a monthly pledge and help me keep this thing going, then um, the link will be in the description as well. And you'll get lots of cool rewards and extra Paris content, private content, as a thank you from me. Number 19, we're back on the Rue d'Omal. Remember the street that had the period at the end of the name? And it's another door that I wouldn't mind coming home to. And that's me in the window. That's my door tour dance. Probably should not have done that. <laughs> Imagine if someone randomly was coming out of their home and they saw some dude with a camera just dancing in front of their door. Uh, how ridiculous. Again, those killer corner balconies. Yeah, Connie Bratzman, I see you. You're a month away from Paris. Fantastic. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to show you the city. Look at 
this too, next building down. Again, it just warms my heart, this ex-art school kid who never thought I'd be able to be surrounded by all of this. My goodness, look at that. Oh, people, 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 invite me up for coffee. I promise I'll take my shoes off. I want to show you the door of this building first, but, or actually second, but first this. Okay, the door. We've got a delivery man coming out, but let me show you the front or the, the top, rather. We call that a, usually a mask out hole, you know, kind of a devilish, weird, theatrical mask-looking dude. Again, we've been doing this how long? 20 minutes, 30 minutes? We haven't seen a door like this yet. It's not just the concentration, it's the variation in this one area. We've only been on two streets. If you play your cards right, you can almost get a twofer with the reflection. There also happens to be a, a courtyard back there, if you can make it out. All right, we're gonna be finishing up soon. When I mentioned that the Patreon supporters that help this project continue, and I give them rewards in return, um, they're gonna get a tour extension. Those of you who are already members, Fritz, as it were, you know that. But I'm going to give you an extension of this tour. We're going to continue privately, and we're going to do a cafe chat with one of our own, one of our Fritz, called uh, Darla Dresser, who's going to talk to us about um, house sitting and being able to travel through Europe, um, watching people's houses, and how, how, how do you go about that? How do you get that set up? So that's part of the extra content I'll be giving my Patreon folks. Again, if you want to become a member, check out the, the, the link in the description. So this is... Lovely. Let me show you the building. We'll get back to the door. More balcony bonanza. Uh, this door for me looks like noisette, which the French uh, call hazelnut. As far as the color, let me just zoom in. I hope that's coming through on your screens. Whoa. Very subtle color, beautiful iron. Car floral motif, seashell. Come on. Of course, across the street, I mean, you wouldn't kick this door out of bed either. A little greenery there at the top of the composition. Here, actually, there. You can play that game of picking out all the animals. Birds. Dragon type dudes. Um, some kind of devilish horned creature, right? Speaking of that, reimagined also in the door handles. Some doors will reveal themselves to you right away, and others you gotta get closer and take your time. Let me show you this. I can barely get down the street because, the, because there's so much to show you here. Remember what we talked about with the man and the woman? The medieval lovers, Eloise Abelard. To refresh your memory or if you came late, these lovers from the 12th century, their remains, because they were separated in life even though they were, were in love, their remains were moved to Père Lachaise Cemetery. And around that time, there was renewed interest in their, in their love story. And you'll often see them on buildings looking across at each other from one door to the next. And there we go, here's an example of it. Let's finish up with this and then we'll switch to the tour extension for my Patreon folks. Um, right there, there's a, a window, and I can't zoom in for you, but we've got cherubs and um, squirrels. Cherubs and squirrels there, and pretty much every window right there. 
But what I want to show you from this corner, uh, let's see, we're on the street Rue de la Rochefoucauld. This is fun because right here behind the green pharmacy sign, Renoir lived. Earlier we saw Renoir's door and we talked about that first impressionist show. But get this, Renoir lived there and Delacroix, the painter, lived right there. Sorry for my digits. Renoir there, Delacroix there. That is insane. And then if we come down here, in a moment I'm going to show my Patreon folks some more, uh, some more doorways. We're going to continue. But just right here in this building, there was a guy called Aimé Millet. And a few episodes ago, we went through on the Rue Ticotone and the passages. And there were these beauty, beautiful caryatids, these female statues that were holding up one of the entrances of, of one of the, the shopping arcades, right? And I mentioned that guy also did the Apollo, the green Apollo statue on the top of the Opera Garnier. And it's going to be hard for you to make it out, but I, trust me, if you're here in person, you'll see it. The artists live there. And... The Opera Garnier is there, and you can see the little green Apollo statue at the tippity top of the roof of the Opera House that the same artist is famous for. So how often do you get this perspective in Paris? This is so exciting when these happy accidents happen, where you can stand on this sidewalk, this quiet little neighborhood, and you can look at the artist's residence and his famous sculpture in this beautiful city of Paris. So that's, that's it, everybody. That's the door tour. Um, live. I hope you enjoyed it. Had a great turnout today. Um, again, this is me. If this is your first time coming, Corey Fry. Call myself a French fry in Paris. Uh, check out all the links that you're going to need to follow me and um, take a tour with me in Paris or become a Patreon member. It's all in the description here. And stay tuned later, a few hours down the road, there's going to be an HD version of uh, this video on YouTube and on Facebook. So, you know, sometimes things are grainy live, but I'll give you the full HD experience. And hopefully you can go back and enjoy all those lovely details. My Patreon supporters, you're going to go over to our private Facebook group, the Cafe Chats group, and I'm going to not only take you and we're going to, well, there's some beautiful doors that you can't even see, but I'm going to save it just for you as a reward for your support. And we're going to see some more doors and then we're going to have a cafe chat with one of our, one of you, um, talk about uh, traveling through France and house sitting and the websites you can use and ways that you can go through and travel for almost no money and um, really enjoy um, yourself over here in Europe. Um, all right, that's all folks. Have a lovely Saturday. Uh, join me next week, or maybe I might take next weekend off, but stay tuned. But anyway, go back, watch the replays, whatever. Stay tuned on my Facebook page, my Instagram, and I'm going to show you lots of cool stuff. One more view across the City of Light. And remember, if you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm going to keep bringing it to you live in real time. Almost as good as being here. Not quite, but almost. And I want to thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely day, and I hope I see you for the next episode. Take care, everybody. Au revoir from Paris.